Doc Talk is brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, a market leader in combination respiratory vaccines. Hi there, folks. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'm pleased that you joined us this morning on Doc Talk. We're going to be talking about transporting cattle, everything from loading and unloading to things that could happen during the transport period. Should be a great show, and I'm glad that you joined us. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And today I don't have a guest, but we'll be talking about something that's a passion of mine and something that occurs on a day-to-day -day basis here in the beef industry, and that's transporting our, our cattle. And, and the first thing that when we start to talk about transporting cattle is to pick out the ones that are fit for transport. And, and more of, a, of an issue is making sure that we don't ship the wrong ones than it is making sure that we ship the right ones. So some of the things that, that I have a list here that, that we'll go through today and we'll have some illustrations of how these, these occur or, or things, but the first thing is, is we wanna make sure that we don't ship a, a sick, injured, or, or weak or fatigued animal. So we're gonna look at the cattle. Basically, if they're sick or injured, these animals that, that don't look fit or don't look like they could complete the ride, these are animals we wanna make sure that we don't put on the, the trailer to ship to town or ship to sale barn or ship anywhere for, for that. The next one is, is one that's kind of a no-brainer, but, but it bears reminding is, is non-ambulatory cattle. And, and again, shipping non-ambulatory cattle is, is not only uh, something that's, that's an issue that we wanna make sure we don't put those animals on the truck, but can be a liability issue and, and, a, and a, a, an issue with the law. Non-ambulatory cattle, when they're moved, they cannot be drugged. They cannot be lifted with chains. These animals have to be moved with a sled or, or the bucket of a loader. So these types of animals definitely cannot be transported and, and any animal that looks like it may go down during transport shouldn't be put on there. Animals that are blind, when they have pink eye or, or cattle that have problems seeing, these animals need special accommodations. We definitely don't want to be putting them on a load with cattle that can see because they don't know their way around. So special accommodations for those types of animals. And then we get into the kind of pregnancy, newborn calf type status. And, and so newborn calves within the first 48 hours, cows that are, that are projected to calve or, or in the last 10% time of their gestation period, these animals shouldn't be placed on a truck because the stress could trigger partrition the animal could go into to calving on the truck, and we don't want that to, to happen. Another one that we want to make sure of is that females that have just given birth or that are fatigued, these animals can go into a stress type situation, they can go into tremors, and they can go down, down on the truck. And then two other classes of animals, definitely don't want to ship any animal that's prolapsed or uterus. These are extremely heavy, and during transport, these can can depart from the body, and when they do, the animals then hemorrhage. So don't ship those, those uterine prolapses in, in the truck. And then the last one is just general, animals in general, poor animal welfare condition. And the best way to judge that is through body condition score, whether it's a beef cow or a dairy cow. We wanna make sure that we aren't shipping those animals that are too thin uh, and too fatigued. 
When we come back from the break, we're going to continue our discussion and we're going to move to the loadout and unloading area. You're watching Doc Talk. We're glad that you joined us and we'll be back in a minute. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Meet the Veterinarian, brought to you by Zuprivo, the BRD treatment you can count on for fast-acting, long-lasting results. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Dr. Cody Poehler is part of the talented team of veterinary professionals at the Wharton Veterinary Clinic. This mixed animal practice received the Texas Veterinary Heritage Award for a practice over 50 years old. Dr. Poehler is a graduate of Texas A&M University. Born and raised in Texas, Dr. Poehler and his wife, Tony, make their home in East Bernard. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment our victory dance because we choose confidence we choose zuprivo for brd treatment ask your veterinarian to prescribe zuprivo zuprivo is a fast acting long lasting brd treatment that you can count on to get the job done choose confidence choose zuprivo from merck animal health the kansas state university college of veterinary medicine is a leader in food animal research and education our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Hi, I'm Kevin Ochsner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University, and I'm glad that you joined us today. And I don't have a guest, as I usually do, and today I'm going to cover a topic on my own. We're talking about transporting cattle, and it's something that's a very important topic in our country. It's important globally because cattle are transported numerous places day to day, whether we're shipping them from the ranch to the feedlot or ranch to the auction market to the feedlot or from the feedlot to the, to the slaughter facility. Animals are transported short, medium, and long distances multiple times during their life in the, in, during all segments of our industry. And, and they say that 50% of the stress at transport occurs at the time of loading. So whatever we can do to reduce that stress at the time of loading or unloading is, is vitally important to the stress level of the calf throughout the entire transport process. So the first thing that I look at is, is, is a combination to get to low stress cattle handling. And, and there's two things that are, that are major uh, stepping stones or things that I look at. And, and the first one is, is facilities. And do we have proper facilities for, for the movement of cattle, whether it's the lead up alley, whether it's the, the crowding tub or the bud box, and then the loading chute. All these things need to be inspected. And if you go to the Beef Quality Assurance and they have a transportation beef quality assurance uh, at www.bqa.com, you can see different things for inspection of facilities. But the first thing I'll do with the inspection of a facility is I'll just walk backwards through it. 
I'll jump up in the loading chute and I'm going to walk down that loading chute and I'm going to inspect that loading chute for holes or cracks or crevices. I'm also going to make sure that we have proper footing as we're coming down. Sometimes if we have a wooden facility, boards get broken. Uh, if we have a metal facility, we can get pieces of metal that have rusted and make sure that we don't have places that are protruding to make sure that we don't have animals that are injuring their hooves or stepping through the facility and degloving coming out or slipping and falling. All these things are, are uh, something we need to understand. The next one is the, the landing area, the area where the cattle first come out and making sure that we have that area cleaned out, we don't have manure buildup, that we have the, the manure moved out so it's not slick. I'll then look at are we using a bud box facility or a, a Temple Grandin type tub facility. Both facilities work fine. We just need to make sure that these facilities have working gates and that they're properly set up. And then lastly, I'll look at the, the lead up alley. One of the things when you back up to the, to the loadout chute, and if you're going to move a lot of cattle through a loadout chute, is we'll put flexible doors that can move to where the person that's backing up backs up the trailer. One of the things that I see as a problem is when people back up to a loadout chute and we don't back up square. Not only does it cause cattle to balk when they get to the top of the chute or when we're unloading, but cattle can catch their shoulders on there and cause injury and lameness. So inspection of facilities, making sure we have the ability to back up square to the facility are all things that we'll, what we want to do. When we come back from the break, we're going to move on to the trailer. We're going to do some trailer inspection and talk about that. You're watching Doc Talk. We're really glad that you joined us. This tip brought to you by Batril 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable. The only Enrofloxacin labeled for single dose administration in cattle is also the only Enrofloxacin labeled for control of BRD and high risk cattle. Batril 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD and high risk cattle or treating BRD. I'm Dr. Nels Lindberg with Animal Medical Center and Production Animal Consultation. Today's tip, we're gonna talk about accurate dosing of cattle as we process or, or work our cows and calves. It's very important that we dose them accurately. How many times do you set your do automatic dosing gun for your wormer, just set it on a flat 60 and process your cows? I would suggest or, or recognize that we actually ought to take a more accurate approach with the weight and dose it up and down accordingly. We could be overdosing, we could be underdosing. Underdosing, as we know, leads to, to, to resistance. Overdosing uh, reduces efficiency. So the most accurate way is to bring them in the chute have a scale head, collect a weight, and dose them accordingly. If you don't have a scale head, I would suggest that you could get one. I promise you it will pay for itself over time. With BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batro 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batro 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batro 100, right the first time. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Your cattle are often at risk of respiratory disease caused by Mycoplasma bovis. But MPB Guard vaccine can help prevent those problems early. MPB Guard delivers proven efficacy against Mycoplasma bovis. Even on young calves just 45 days old, it also gives you the convenience of an initial two-dose sub-Q vaccination series. So help guard your cattle from costly respiratory disease caused by Mycoplasma bovis. Just ask your veterinarian about MPB Guard vaccine. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. 
Hi there folks and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and I'm flying this thing solo today as it would be different than what you tune in most of the time and see me with the guest and it's not that uh, I think that nobody else can handle this subject it's just that uh, it's one of those that, that I am directly involved with and, and one of those that, that lends itself to spending a little time with y'all today and, and, and talking about this, but we're talking about transporting cattle. And, and when we talk about transportation of cattle, I think everybody understands how cattle are shipped, not only around the country, but now globally, um, when we have cattle that are being shipped, uh, live animal exports, um, and also cattle across state lines within the United States. And not only is it important that these animals be shipped safely, um, but it's, it's, it's important that we do it to improve health as well. So when a lot of cattle, though, are shipped uh, locally, and I can remember working with my dad and grandfather's uh, veterinary clinic and, and going back to the early 70s and, and thinking about the way that we have changed the, in transportation of cattle locally, I can still remember when we would just place the stock racks on the pickup and put a 2,000-pound put a, a bull in there and drive him to the clinic and you took off the wooden uh, back and ran down, beat him down the loading chute uh, to unload bulls. And so when you'd see uh, Lee Routh or people from back home driving down the road and their truck is shaking and moving like that, and they'd have a bull or a cow or something in there, and now we have these long goosenecks and we have these three-quarter ton pickups can pull about anything. So we've really changed and progressed in the equipment that we have to, to, to move cattle with. But when we inspect a trailer, the number one thing we want to First thing you want to inspect is you want to get up in the trailer and you want to look at the flooring. And we want to make sure that we have the entire floor covered, no holes where the animal could have a protruding limb. And then the other one is, is look at boards or, or if it's metal, we're going to look for rust. If, but if it's a wooden floor with planks and something in there, we want to make sure that all the boards are, are square, that they're tight, and that we don't have loose boards or the possibility for a problem there. Another thing that's important, of course, when we're moving is that we have doors that function properly. And sometimes this is for animal safety, but a lot of time this is for human safety as well. And making sure that you're back away from those doors when you shut these doors and, and having the proper loading facility will really improve uh, human safety when loading and it improves cattle safety when, when transporting. Kick the tires, make sure we got tire pressure, got good tires on these trailers. Axles and bearings, all these need to be, be uh, checked. And then we want to make sure that we're going to have proper ventilation. Ventilation during shipping is what helps prevent shipping stress. So we want to have a properly ventilated trailer so that we make sure that we don't have these animals in a, in a system that, the, the, that they don't have good ventilation and prevent respiratory disease. And the last one is footing. Whether you have footing in that trailer that is the, the rubber footing, whether you have metal footing, uh, make sure that you have proper footing in the trailer and footing that won't injure the cattle. Uh, sometimes the best intentions have unintended consequences. But checking footing, when we come back, we're going to talk about how to load those animals on the trailer, and we're going to wrap up the show. Thanks for watching. Hi there folks, Dr. Dan from K-State. Are you BQA certified? Well, if not, you should be. If you work with beef cattle in any aspect, whether it's cow, calf, stalker, or feedlot, or if you work in an auction market, if you're a 4-H or an FFA member, or if you're ancillary to the beef industry, it's something that you need to do and become familiar with. Beef Quality Assurance has been around for over 25 years and it serves as a cornerstone of education to help producers identify management processes that can be improved. Not only have those that are involved with the beef industry embraced BQA because it's the right thing to do, they have also gained through increased profitability. Traditionally, BQA training is offered face-to-face -face through your state coordinator, and it still is. But today, you can also have this educational opportunity, which can be obtained through the Beef Quality Assurance online training provided by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. Go to the website, bivi-bqa.com, where you can register and become BQA certified at no cost to you between now and October 31st. Also, if you register and become certified between now and October 31st, 
You can also be entered into a drawing to win some great prizes, including a tailgate package valued at $500. It's a great program. It's been around for almost three decades. It's a cornerstone to safe, wholesome, affordable beef. It's Beef Quality Assurance. Get certified today. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University, where I'm a professor, and I'm the Jones Professor of Production Medicine and, and, and Epidemiology. And we're talking about transporting cattle, and it's a topic that's important to me. It's important to a lot of people, and it's especially important to the cattle that we're moving uh, across this country, locally, from farm to farm, from pasture to pasture, and understanding things you need to do when you load these cattle and, and unload them. But we've gone over picking the right animals, we've looked at the loadout facility, we've looked at the trailer, now we're going to talk about putting those animals on the trailer. One of the things when you put animals on the trailer is you'll make sure you don't overload the trailer. And, and there's two reasons for that. One is you got to make sure that you put the proper weight on the trailer that your trailer and truck can handle. Overloading can create accidents and it can can have some human safety implications. The other reason why we don't want to overload the trailer is because we don't want to wind up with, with animals getting hurt. And, and so when we have animals too tight, we can increase bruising, we can increase injuries, bumping, not intentionally, but just happens because animals are in close proximity and trying to stay up on the trailer. Another thing that's important is that we don't mix animals of small and, and bigger sizes. And one of the reasons for this is because if we have animals on the truck that are small with larger animals, they can go down underneath the larger animals and get trampled. So putting them in, sorting them before you put them on the truck, putting them in different compartments so that they stay away from each other is vitally important to the health and safety of the animals being transported. Market bulls and market cows or cull bulls and cull cows are shipped frequently. And when we load those animals, whether it's short hauls or long hauls, we want to make sure that we don't mix bulls and cows in the same uh, compartments because of riding activity that can occur. And what will happen is, is that we can have cows being hurt from riding. Bulls can also be hurt during times of riding and slipping on the trailers. When you're driving down the road and you're loaded with animals, I know this makes perfect sense to people that have done it, but we don't want to start or stop suddenly. Easing into to taking off from a stop sign or, or shutting down earlier to make sure that the animals don't lose their footing during transport is, is important. And another thing is, is making sure that you match the health and well-being of the cattle with the distance of the haul. The, the, the younger and the more uh, fit the animal is, the longer haul it can, it can uh, withstand up to a point. So the, the yearling cattle and things to that nature, all this can be judged by shrink, which is based on the amount of uh, weight loss during transport. And the last two things, understand heat stress and cold stress. Heat stress is more of an issue for cattle than cold stress is, but if we are looking at times of heat stress, we want to make sure that we keep the cattle rolling down the road, don't stop and let them overheat, and maybe we need to ship them at night. 
We sure appreciate you watching Doc Talk. I hope you had a great show today. And, and remember, we always recommend that you work with a local veterinarian. And if you want to find out more about what I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from the College of Veterinary Medicine, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, a market leader in combination respiratory vaccines.